This is the 27 inch north field bandsaw that I use for resawing. I've got a Sterrett blade on this particular model that is, I think a, it's an inch and a quarter. It's called a woodpecker. It's a hook tooth. I find this is pretty good for the basic stuff that I do in hard and soft. This is soft tools here. I'm going to do some testing on uh, laminating today. So here we go. I uh, hope this isn't too jerky. This camera is about to the end of its view. Got a two horsepower variable speed pulley on this model. I've already got the tension set for an inch and a quarter. Field. And this is an attachment that they have with two rollers here and a full height roller on the back. I like this best of all. It's uh, not, not a motor driven. It's got a adjuster, spring tension adjustment on each of these arms that controls the side tension. So this particular roller on the back is on the same plane side of the fence. This particular model has originally no brush on there and this is a brush that I purchased and this triangular trapezoidal steel member here I cut this to fit and drilled holes in the uh, guard basically and with this it keeps the wheel from collecting dust. Likewise I have one on the bottom. Uh, this is typical aluminum uh, wheels on this model of the 27 inch uh, bandsaw here. I'll show you this. Well, here are the two adjustments on the back. And I have I've drilled a series of holes here for each one because uh, you've only got so much latitude. Uh, likewise, likewise on the front, I've got four holes here, drilled and threaded. I'll take this loose and show, give you a view. So, uh, there we are down in there. I was uh, a little apprehensive when I first had to drill these holes in here, but you make a jig out of a block of wood that keeps the drill straight. You can use soft or hardwood and just take your regular metal cutting drill bit and uh, go at it that way. Uh, if you're going to use either hardwood or softwood, pre-drill each hole in the block of wood before you make each drill hole in the, the top here because just the wobble you have in a handheld situation uh, you're going to get a little bit of out of square. Uh, I was amazed that this came out as square with the world as it is and I'll 
flip this around so you can see what this looks like with your wing nuts. But it's turned out to be a very good setup for me for a small time. You can just eyeball it so the nip here lines up with the nip on the large roller. You have to put oil down in here every now and then. They get a little stiff. Now we're going to go down below here. And that's the other end of it, that little collection. But these brushes really keep, I think it's the 800 series of the Felger bandsaw where I found these brushes. So you get a metal and two screws and a uh, the brush itself. If you don't have the right tension on the brush, uh, it'll either push too hard or uh, give you some other problems. There was a flap here that was supposed to take the dust off, but I never found that to work that good. Once again, aluminum, full-size 27-inch wheel. Now this was a X Boeing aircraft out in Seattle. I drove the van out there to pick it up. This is this is all the way it is. It's about 1,300 pounds. And so they had extra safety devices. There's a micro switch to, so some worker wouldn't leave the gate open here. We'll go back here and take a look at the motor. I don't know if you can see all this. But that's the variable speed with the crank as you see it down there closer to the floor. I basically run it at a medium speed. Of course, here's an extra table that uh, has this. Now, another thing I like about this particular bandsaw is this is your locking mechanism. You push that forward, and then you can go up to 45 degree tilt, and you crank this baby over. read that. Now originally this was 400, 440 volts and so I stopped by Northfield on the way back from Seattle. And we down offloaded the, the bandsaw and they changed it over to 230 volts three phase instead of 440. 440 is a little steep for me. This is the tension device back here Right now, I have it set for somewhere around an inch, inch and a half for this inch and a quarter blade. So that's about it. If you have any questions, just give me a shout. Thanks for watching.